Hey guys, it's Cooper Gretsch here from Kick It to Scoot. I am the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors and results. You want to be part of the show, Kick It to Scoot? Send through your questions through the Facebook link, which I'll attach every show on the post. And if you want to email me at aflinfolive at gmail.com, send through your questions and you may feature on the show and be answered your question from yours truly, Cooper Gretsch, for free. Yes, for free. If you want to be on the show, as I said, send it through and I'll get back to you. Go Saints. Two weeks in this is. Yes, Scoops, come on, mate. Let's keep going. Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of Kick It to Scoops. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch, the sole admin of AFL Information, straight rooms and results. We've got a very, very big show for you today. Yes, it's virtual again, unfortunately, due to the lockdown. Next week will be virtual also, but that's okay because we've got plenty to cover on the show today. We're going to have Bev from The Bev Show. The first half of the interview will be up and running in this episode today, so really look forward to that. Um, we've got this very special edition of Scoops Goes Bang. We're referring to a few things, which I'll get to shortly. Uh, we're going to review and preview the round just gone. My rolling all Australian team, my Brownlow votes reenacted like Gillan McLaughlin, which everyone loved last week, so that's why we're going to see it again this week and in future weeks. Uh, your, audio, your audio messages is a few this week, and as I said, the Bev clip towards the end of this show. And a few other interesting clips before the Bev interview begins, which I'm hoping you really look forward to. Now, and also my final thoughts. But one thing I want to mention to you guys, Merch and Cameo, you want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Merch, like the merch I'm wearing my Scoops Goes Bang t-shirt as we speak. Uh, you want any of these, This top, you want this top, any other forms of merch, t-shirts, mugs, Yes, mugs are back for a very limited time. So if you want a mug, go on the website, which is attached in this YouTube description video. Uh, and also, stubby holders, I said last week they'll be back. They are. They'll be live on the website after this episode is finished airing. You can go to the website and purchase stubby holders for $15. They'll be there for a limited time only also. So if you want some stubby holders with my uh, based on it, well, you know what to do. Head to the website after this episode and go and purchase yours now for $15. Now, we'll move on to the world-famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. <laughs> yes, I had, I had my own sound effects there. Um, anyway, Joel Salwood. Yes, I may have mentioned this man's name a few times throughout the journey. And uh, it's one thing I'm really pissed off about is Joel Selwood's another week he's done this. Slammed a player said this time in, in the Dockers game in Perth last Thursday night at Optus Stadium. He slammed it, a free player's head into the turf. Nothing is said from the match review panel. No fine, no suspension. It's ridiculous. This has got to stop. Now people can say, oh, you don't like Joel Selwood. Well, simply Joel Selwood, is, this is not the first time he's repeated this act this season alone, let alone previous years. But how he gets away with this Michael Christian, Steve Hawking's gone now. You don't have to favor Geelong players anymore. Steve Hawking's gone. But seriously, this is ridiculous. This is getting on a joke. It's an unsportsmanlike act. It's supposed to be a captain, a role model. If any player does this, it's pathetic. But Joel Sowell has done this more than once this year. AFL need to make an example out of him. He's a dirty player. I don't care. People say he's tough, he's courageous, whatever. But the acts he performs on the field, towards other players is ridiculous. You can see players like him whinging about umpiring when they don't go his way. He gets plenty of free kicks per game. 
in in the current player's history, I think he's over 100 more free kicks in the next current AF, next best current AFL player with most frees in their career. He gets gifted games in terms of suspension. He gets let off. He should have been made an example out of this. They had a prime opportunity to do it, uh, which a clip you would have just seen. He should have got suspended for that. Let me know in the comments down below what you think if he should have been suspended. But Michael Christian, the match review panel on the AFL, the people that are making the decisions about Joel Solwood and any other match review incident, let your game! Now, this is an interesting one I'm going to bang on about. The coaches' votes. Now, the coaches' votes are – there's two games in particular I want to reference here. And it's not just off this week's coaches' votes, but it's off the last three weeks in particular. Now, before people want to say I'm comparing the two players, Brad Crouch from the Saints and Marcus Bunn and from the Bulldogs, no, obviously, clearly they haven't played each other in the last three weeks. Well, there's a comparison here I want to compare. I want to get your honest thoughts, please, in the comments down below. Brad Crouch, terrific the last three weeks. I think he's had, he's had over 30 possessions each game in the last three weeks. He had this week against the Playlight Footy Club win a close 13-point loss. Brad Crouch had 36 disposals. He had about 58% efficiency, 11 clearances, nine tackles, and around 580 metres gain. That's a great game. Jack still had 37 possessions, around the same efficiency, if not a bit higher, less clearances and less uh, tackles. Same for Ollie Wines, who had about five less possessions. Efficiency was much worse, or if not, it's around the same. Uh, less clearances and less tackles. Brad Crouch, now, okay. Steel and Wines have got the votes ahead of Brad Crouch. I would have said, you know what, not fair, but I'll cop it. Brad Crouch did not even get a single vote from Rats or from Kenny Hinckley. This has really pissed me off. It really has. The players like him, Tom Mitchell, they don't, Jack McRae, Jackson McRae, they don't get given votes because they're not the big, 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 big name players from other clubs. You look at the um, coaches' votes leaderboard. It's all the big name players, and some of those big name players haven't had great years. You know, Brad Crouch had been screwed the last few weeks before this week, and I kind of let it slide. But this is the week where I draw the line. Brad Crouch has been screwed not only by his own coach, but the opposition coach, Ken Inkley, Chris Fagan the week before, and Damien Hardwick the week prior. Damien Hardwick, you had to get a mention this week, didn't you? You mad, bro? You should be happy this week. You won. But anyway, Marcus Bonaparte is a comparison here I want to make mention here. So Brad Crouch had 36 possessions with all those 11 clearances, nine tackles, 58% efficiency, and over 580 metres gain. Bon and Pally had, sim- had 36 possessions also. His efficiency was around the same. He had about 10, turno- 10 11 turnovers. No new amount the same as clearances and tackles to Brad Crouch. And he somehow got nine of a possible 10 coaches' votes. Nine. I had a Toy Miller who had way better efficiency. Similar disposals, in fact, more, a few more, better clearances, better meters gain, everything. Jack McRae, two goals, 30 possessions, did not get many votes. He got three, I think. Talking Miller got seven, I think. But how, but this is my point. You mentioned Bottom Pally comparing to Crouch, Brad Crouch from the Saints. Yes, different games. How Brad Crouch with those stats got zero votes? Zero votes. I want you to think that, sink that into your head. Zero votes. Bonapelli got nine out of 10 for the same number of possessions, less efficiency, more turnovers, less clearances, less tackles, less meters gained, and got nine out of 10 when you clearly could have gave Toik Miller and Jack McRae, Alex Keith, and a few others votes out of Bonapelli. Pathetic. Embarrassing. Rats, Hinkley, Hardwick, Fagan, and uh, Stewie Jew, and Luke Beveridge, lift your game. Stop picking votes for favourite plays. Don't tell me Bonham probably deserved 9 out of 10 coaches' votes or 10 for someone comments that. You do not deserve anywhere near that. The help break crouch was 0 out of 10 is pathetic. Rats and um, Kenny Hinckley, Stewie Jew, Luke Beveridge, pathetic. Absolutely garbage. <sighs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed that world famous edition. World famous edition of Scoops goes bang. Now we're going to review and preview the rounds just gone and the upcoming round, which the venues are still up in the air. As of today, as of this recording, South Australia has gone into a seven day lockdown. Victoria's has been extended for seven days. 
Uh, so there'll be no games with a crowd in both those states if games are to commence in the states, in those two states. But we'll preview the rounds just gone first before we preview this week's rounds. Uh, not many rounds to go. All the way back to Thursday night at Opta Stadium, Fremantle 31, defeated by Geelong's 100. What's more to say? Um, yeah, the Dockers will be very disappointed. The first Thursday night game, in, I think it was five or six years, or Thursday slash Friday night game within six years. So Dockers had the prime time slot, and unfortunately they failed on the big stage, and Geelong were too good, uh, Tom Haw- led by Tom Hawkins kicking four. Uh, Richmond and Brisbane at Metricon Stadium in Jack Rail's 300, kick six. Yes, congratulations, Jack. People say you're not going to mention to kick six. There you go. I've said it's a stop sulking, Richmond fans. You won this. You should be happy. Be the Lions are going pretty well up until last week against the Saints. Uh, yeah, 106 to 86. Brisbane be disappointed. Losing Eric Kippel has clearly hurt them. We stay in Danaher's solid games, though. But um, third tall board is there. You sure know? And Charlie Cameron's not in form uh, at all. But uh, no, Richmond 20 point victory in, in Jack Rail's surrendered game. The Saints and the power. Now, this was a big game. Had the Saints won, they would have been in the eight. Whether that was seventh or eighth would have obviously clearly determined on other results. But they would have been in the eight no matter what. And a game ahead of Richmond, Essendon, GWS. In fact, it would have been six points ahead of GWS now that they lost. So it was a vital game. And unfortunately, they didn't win. Had Royal Marshall had a few shots late, 13-point victory to the power. Charlie Dixon did nothing. Dougal Howard did a great job. But, uh, yeah, he was great. Dougal Howard on Charlie Dixon, who had no impact on the game whatsoever. It was the other young place in the play like football. Mitch Georgiades, Boyd Woodcock. Uh, yeah, a few players in the younger gate in the fourth half for the power that did a job for, the, for them over the Saints at Marvel Stadium, an empty Marvel Stadium. But, yeah, Jack Steele was great. Brad Crouch also. But, uh, unfortunately, Saints will have to bounce back against West Coast in Perth this week. Uh, the Suns and the Bulldogs. The Western Bulls, 11-point victory over the Suns. The Suns, competitive. Just great to see Troy Miller terrific again. Uh, yeah, a few other players did well. Brayden Nellis went off a hamstring early in the game, which didn't help. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it is what it is. Hawthorne and the Demons, a draw and an empty MCG on Saturday night, 79 apiece. Well, the Hawks were really happy. Luke Bruce, wasn't he fantastic? Luke Bruce, not Bruce, Bruce. He was great. Uh, Melbourne is their season in terms of the premiership gone? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Max Gorn, to be honest, had a pretty poor game for his standards on young ruckman Ned Reeves and big boy Ben McAvoy. But to be fair, I think beat Max Gorn on Saturday night. Uh, the Sunday games, it was four on Sunday, which is a rarity nowadays. But uh, North Melbourne, 74, defeated by Essendon, 92. North were in it the whole way through. Essendon did what they had to do. They were amazing. But um, Peter Wright was probably one of the best on the ground, which you will know soon in my Brownlow votes. Uh, Collingwood and Carlton. Two arch rolls at an empty MCG also. 62 to the Pies, Carlton 91. Collingwood, what happened? They What happened? Well, they did to the Saints in the last quarter, albeit they didn't beat them. Carlton did to them. Harry McCarthy, four goals in the last quarter um, and set up the win for the Blues over Carl- Collingwood. Sam Walsh, she was terrific in, uh, which you could tell with one of his great goals, he kicked that uh, how up and about he was. Um, yeah, the Crows and the Eagles at the Adelaide Oval. Adelaide 56, West Coast 98. Jamie Cripps is great kicking five, but uh, they had not much to say else in that game. GWS and the Swans again. GWS started on like, like a house on fire. Toby Green, Matt DePaul were late, late inclusions. Late, yeah, late. They were out of the side. Very last minute due to COVID reasons, as was Callum Mills and Colin O'Riordan for the Swans. So that was just stating for those two, for those four players who are now forced to have two-week quarantine while they're in Queens, if they're playing in Queensland. Um, but, yeah, the Swans, Buddy lit it up in the second half, especially uh, Luke Parker, Tom Mickey, who's probably the one of the key recruits of the season, which uh, someone messaged me and wanted me to mention, uh, and it's probably a fact that Tom Mickey's probably been the recruit of the year, but segments like that I might mention later on towards the end of the season, heading into the trade period and draft period. Now, we'll preview the ra- upcoming rounds. Not many rounds to go, um, so it's obviously round 19 this round. Well, and Collingwood now was scheduled to be at the Adelaide Oval. Now that doesn't look like that'll be the case at all. So this could be in Melbourne. So we've got no idea where this game's going to be at. It was originally meant to be at the Adelaide Oval. So Collingwood and Port Adelaide, Collingwood said to miss a few players. So um, about four players could have out, and all of them are experienced. So 
going to go for the power here. Carlton and North Melbourne on Saturday, scheduled to be at Marvel. Uh, again, this could all change, but it's really tough. The top. North are going competitive in all the games. Carlton, always hit and miss, performed well in the last quarter against Collingwood. I'm going to go for Carlton just, but North performed really well the last three weeks in particular. Brisbane and Gold Coast, this will be at the Gabba on Saturday. Um, going to go for the Brisbane Lions there. They bounce back after two losses in a row. The Eagles and the Saints at, in Perth, the Twilight game on Saturday. This is locked in and definitely happening in Perth and at this time slot as well. That's also question mark now with other games which are again swapped around yet again. Uh, no, I'm going to go for the Saints. Eagles, you know what I think of them. Uh, they're average away from home. Yes, they're at home, but North put it up to them, so that means the Saints can too. And a must win for the Saints. A must win for both sides. So whoever wins this season could be in jeopardy. Uh, Adelaide and Hawthorne, again, this is meant to be Adelaide Oval. This won't be in Adelaide now. Who knows where it'll be? But, well, this really could determine who I tip now, but I'm going to go for Adelaide just, uh, but really toss the coin, and probably depending on when the venue is. If it's in Melbourne, could lean towards Hawthorne, but in the meantime, I'll go for the Crows. Uh, Melbourne and the Western Bulldogs in Melbourne. Um, I'm going to go for the Bulldogs there in a close one. Essendon and GWS, uh, question mark of where, where this has been played also. Uh, it's in Queensland. I'll go for GWS. Uh, Geelong v. Richmond, scheduled at the M2G. Geelong got rejected the game at G Major. Good. Fixtures where it's planned to be, which is at the MCG. Uh, I'll go for Geelong, though, in this one. And the final game, venue also yet to be determined on Sunday. The Swans and the Dockers, I'll go for the Swans, who were probably a flag favourite contender among the top sides with Brisbane and, and yeah, Brisbane, Sydney, and the Bulldogs. Now, we'll move on to my rolling All-Australian team, which people love to debate about. I'm just getting it up in front of me, guys, so bear with me. But, um, yeah, people like to debate about it, and there's some big changes, and I mean big, big changes. There's four changes, in fact, to the side. So let's have a look at how the sides feature out now. We're going to start off with the back six. The back six is still unchanged. Jake Lloyd, Stephen May, Isaac Cumming, Jack Crisp, Tom Stewart, and Daniel Rich. Let me know if your thoughts on that back six. Uh, now, a few positional changes around the forward half and wingers. Yes, I know some of these aren't pure wingers, but it is what it is. Uh, yes, it is what it is indeed. Uh, in the wingers, uh, war, uh, no. Tom Mitchell and Ollie Wines were allowed is about to feature soon. Tom Mitchell and Ollie Wines. And I know they're inside mids, but and there's so many inside mids and not really any major wingmen dominating, which I want to mention one in shortly. Tom Mitchell and Ollie Wines are on the wing. Jack Steele's the man is still in the center. Uh, the forward six, Rory Laird at half forward, as is Sam Walsh. Uh, Walsh has been terrific and uh, deserves his spot in the team. Uh, Tex Walker is the center half forward. Now, the forward pockets. Um, a Harry Mackay, the complimental leader, and an inclusion to the side is Bailey Fritch. Now, Toby Green has had to go out due to the quarantine reasons, missed a few games as well, um, and he's going to miss the next two weeks also. So that's why he's purely because Toby Green's out, and Bailey Fritch is probably the next best option the most. He's only averaging 9.8 disposals, Bailey Fritch, 31 goals, so he deserves his spot as a backup for Toby Green. And the new pull forward is Tom Hawkins. I could have swapped him and Harry Mackay around, but Aaron McCoy is a bit more flexible in terms of moving around. So I put Tom Hawkins at full forward for that reason. But he's the next best forward in the team. The Ruckman is Sean Darcy. Not Brody Grunny, but he's Brody Grunny on the bench. You'll have to find out shortly. Sean Darcy, I know he got injured in the start of last quarter against Geelong, but he was terrific. He's had a great year, which has been well documented by myself. I've been really, really, really dominant the last month in particular, and he deserves his spot as a starting Ruckman, because there's not really any other Ruckman that are taking the opportunity. There's a few Tom Mickey, Brody Grundy. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Uh, Toy Camillo is a sentiment along, oh, sorry, the Rover with Jackson McRae. Both had great games on the weekend. The interchange, Luke Parker, Zach Merritt, and the two ins, Ben Keys from the LA Footy Club, averaging over 30 touches, he deserves a spot on the side, uh, or around 30 disposals. And Carl Amon, a pure wingman on the interchange, had a great year for the power. Highly underrated. Um, polling well in my brown leverage, which you don't see because I only show you the top five or so, but he's 
performing really well, Carl Amon, and he deserves a spot in the team. We're trying to get him in for a long time, as I mentioned. Paul season I thought about, but I end up going his teammate in Ben Keys instead. So the overall changes from the round 17 side to the round 18 side is in his Carl Amon, Ben Keys, Bailey Fritch, and Tom Hawkins. Out goes Brody Grundy, David Mundy, Callum Mills, and Toby Green, the latter two due to quarantine reasons and missing the next few weeks. So leave your comments down below, guys, what your thoughts are on my rolling all-Australian team. Now, we'll move on to the next best segment compared to Scoops Goes Bang, and that is my Brownlow votes reenacted and read like Gillen McLaughlin. Now, as I said, <clears throat> let's put on the voice like Gill. Round 18 votes. Fremantle v Geelong. Fremantle, S. Darcy, one vote. Geelong, C. Guthrie, two votes. Geelong, S. Menangola, three votes. Richmond v. Brisbane. Richmond, T. Nankervis, one vote. Brisbane, H. McCluggage, two votes. Richmond, J. Rewald, three votes. St. Kilda v. Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide, O. Wines, one vote. St. Kilda, J. Steele, two votes. St. Kilda, B. Crouch, three votes. Gold Coast versus Western Bulldogs. Gold Coast, J. Sharp, one vote. Western Bulldogs, J. McRae, two votes. Gold Coast, T. Miller, three votes. Melbourne v. Hawthorne. Hawthorne, Al Roost, one vote. Melbourne, C. Oliver, two votes. Hawthorne, T. Mitchell, three votes. North Melbourne v. Essendon. Essendon, D. Parrish, one vote. Essendon, P. Wright, two votes. Essendon, Z. Merritt, three votes. Collingwood v. Carlton. Carlton, M. Kennedy, one vote. Collingwood, J. Degoe, two votes. Carlton, S. Walsh, three votes. Adelaide v. West Coast. West Coast. S. Hearn, one vote. Adelaide, B. Keys, two votes. West Coast, J. Cripps, three votes. GWS is Sydney. Sydney, G. Hewitt, one vote. Sydney, T. Hickey, two votes. Sydney, L. Parker, three votes. The leaderboard after round 18, as I said, five rounds ago, round 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. The top five are as follows. In fifth place on 21 votes is Ollie Wines. Eagle fourth on 22 votes, Jack Steele and Sam Walsh. In third place on 25 votes, Tom Mitchell. In second place on 27 votes, Toik Miller from the Gold Coast Suns, who is ineligible for the Brown line, unfortunately. But the leader still, but on 31 votes, on the Western Bulldogs, Jackson McRae, the top five is heating up. Ten votes between Ollie Wines and McRae. It's nine votes between Steele Walsh and McRae. Six votes is Tommy Mitchell behind McRae. And Toy Camilla is ever creeping up to Jackson McRae. Four votes behind Jackson McRae. So it is heating up in my round line votes for 2021. Let me know your thoughts down below for the votes for that I just made for this round and the overall leaderboard after round. 18. Now, we'll move on to your audio messages. Now, we've got a few audio messages today. Uh, we'll just hear a few of them right now, and I'll answer them. But here's the first one. Yeah, g'day, Coops. Matt Foster from Katani Footy Club here. Was just wondering if you think that Cam Zerha is in better form than Tim Membry at the moment. Cheers, mate. Good question. Cam Zoha, is he in better form at the moment than Tim Membry? <laughs> no, not really. Tim Membry's doing a lot of la- around the ground, which people don't see. In la- he's late in quarters. He's pushing into the back half to help out Duke or Howard, Cal Wilkie, Tommy Highmore and co. Um, he's not performing great, but Cam Zoha has probably had a good game against West Coast, but uh, no, pretty even, so I'll go no. We'll move on to the final audio messages. Final audio message, rather. 
Hey, Scoops. Jackson from Frio here. Just wondering, who do you reckon's got a better chance of making the eight this year, Frio or West Coast, if either of them? Shout out to all the Frio boys. Good question, Jackson. Uh, we'll go go the Dock- Dockers. I don't rate the Eagles and now they're performing at the moment. The Dockers let one slip against Geelong, but I think Freo could make the eight along with the Saints. So, uh, as I've always said, from 7th to 12th, it is literally open. The top six is set. The, again, the order of the six isn't set, but the six teams are. 7th and 8th is up for grabs between St Kilda, Freo, GWS. Uh, they're, they're the three I think they're in contention. I don't think West Coast will make it. I know that they're now and people can say yes, and is in contention, but in Richmond. But in the end of the day, I think it'll be between St Kilda, GWS, and Frio. Those were the two audio questions. These picks really do appreciate that. Now, you've been waiting for it. You have now got it. The Bev interview. You'll see the first half this week, then the second half next week. Please enjoy this and leave your thoughts down below during the interview. What your thoughts of thoughts are of the interview. Now, let's go listen to the interview with the one. The only Bev. Good day, uh, Cooper and uh, viewers. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, this has been a long time coming, hasn't it? Uh, a lot of build up, but uh, it's finally happening. So uh, hopefully everyone enjoys it. Exactly. They all wanted it and now they've got it. They've probably been harassing you for messages on your own show, on the Bev show. Uh, yeah, they wanted it and they've now got it. Yeah, I've, I've had a few uh, a few tags, a few mentions uh, in a particular video and post. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, definitely an audience that uh, want this. So uh, happy to do it if uh, people want it. Exactly. So they can enjoy the next however long this goes for. I'm sure they'll want it to go forever, but obviously can't go forever. But we'll see how long it goes. Uh, a few of the segments I was going to go through today is basically why we are doing this. Um, you will have always have this segment edition of scoops goes bang which bev is going to see the first time in person oh well we're virtual anyway uh we're going to go through some afl discussion and of course we can never forget i know this is a footy show but we can't be talking to bev about talking about the beef uh some quick fire questions we're gonna have a quiz of some sort and we're going to recall some famous footy mo- recent footy moments maybe from a while ago and some of your questions and of course we'll answer them just honestly as we can now bev I want to start off with you. Um, what is your goal and ambitions? Obviously, you want to be in the sports media. But generally, what would you like to do? Oh, definitely sports broadcasting. Uh, you know, I look at a you know a person like Bruce McAvaney, and I mean, he obviously has uh, retired from AFL, but you know, when he was in his prime, he was you know calling AFL and doing the racing and Olympics, which he's got coming up in a couple of weeks and, and, uh, and other sports as well. So, to, you know, to do so- something like that is, is a dream for me. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, I can, uh, I can do that. But what, what's your in- ambitions, uh, Cooper? I'd love to love to hear what your ambitions are. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty much the same, exact same as you, Bev. I want to be in the sports media on Fox footy or channel seven or wherever we can get it. Uh, obviously, you know, that's a very hard thing to get into. Um, yeah, pretty much the exact same. I just want to be in the sports media, trying to be, you know, at club press conferences during the week when I can in Melbourne, here in Melbourne or Victoria. Um, yeah, almost the exact same, but obviously it's really hard to get into. But we've got to keep pushing. And uh, what we're doing at the moment is a step in the right direction. Now, some other... Absolutely. Two, uh, you're into sports media other than Bruce McAvaney. Um, what... what what made you make up your own show in the Bev show? Like what motivated you to do your own show publicly? Were you nervous at, at all out there publicly? Because obviously I only, only done I only done it recently publicly to my face, with my face in it. No, I've always been interested in sport and I've also been interested in media and being in front of the camera. Um I sort of, even before the Bev show, I used to do sort of YouTube videos and stuff. They weren't as popular as what the Bev show is, but um, I've always been into that sort of thing. And and uh, also live streaming as well has been a, a big uh, interest of, of mine. And that's really how the Bev show started back in 2016. I, I sort of started uh, doing some live shows and it sort of went from there. And I mean, the pages sort of progressed in a in a direction that I, I didn't think it would uh, uh, since then, but um yeah, I've always been sort of interested in yeah being in front of the camera and and presenting and hosting and and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, that's just yeah, it's just basically based off my off my own uh, interests basically. So what? Do you, how do you handle the trolls, Bev? Obviously, we all 
all the time. But what do you do? Do you ignore them? Is it a mixture of ignoring them and blocking them? What do you do? Yeah, it's an interesting topic, and it's probably a good one for us to talk about because I, I know we we both probably deal with the the, the similar, if not the same, stuff uh, with what we do. But uh, I probably would sort of um, admit that probably when I started the Bev Show and and started to get a following, I probably didn't handle the the trolls and haters as well as I could have. Sort of now, fast forwarding to to now, I've sort of you know learned to be a bit more chill and and relaxed because. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but it's it's sort of part of social media and doing this sort of thing, unfortunately. You're not going to please everyone. I don't feel like uh, uh, me supporting my club and, and doing a video on that, uh, showing my support should really offend anyone, but unfortunately it, it does. It doesn't please everyone. And and so you just got to learn to sort of, um, you know, not take it too too much to heart. You've just got to remember that, uh, you know, you, you, um, you've, you've got a following. Um, People out there are not going to like what you do. Uh, they're not going to. Um, they're not going to support what you do. You know, they're going to do everything they can to try and bring you down, and 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 also jealousy as well is also a part of it. So that's the way I look at it. And and um, what about you, uh, Cooper? You've obviously just started doing some some video stuff and and showing your 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 face. Uh, how do you sort of deal with uh, with with haters, especially given you, you're very opinionated? I've found. Yeah. So- yeah, look, to be honest, um, what's happened there? I always had a bit of a freeze. They were all good. Um, yeah, look, do take it to heart sometimes, as you said, but you're going to try and get through it. A lot of the attacks, like if they say, oh, St Kilda suck or you don't like this team, that's completely different. But when some people are threatening me, like the previous, a few weeks ago, not even some guys said, I hope you die, and then you had mm. some like a, you know, what, I'd love to know what this means, but we're going to have to beep some of this out, but, what a world vision a bastard means. I'd love to know what that means. But, you know, when people make comments like that, threatening you, saying they're going to follow you to your house and at the football and that, those type of comments is more obviously clearly more hurtful and wrong. Um, it sucks to cop that. Um, now, normally, as you said, it's part of the business. Yes, the opinionated stuff, same stuff, stuff, but stuff like that is not on at any level. Um, and that's the bit that sucks the most. And what sucks the most is I've got the seven-day Facebook ban for uh, – Posting a screenshot, you know, of what those trolls said and uh, saying that bullying's not okay and that their parents must not be proud of them. And that caught me up, Ben. Well, obviously not happy with that. But we move on now and uh, hopefully they're just, as you said, jealous people. And it was funny. It was actually Richmond losing to Gold Coast. It's like I made Richmond lose to Gold Coast. It just, they lost themselves. So, yeah, look, I'd take it probably a bit more to heart than you do. But, um, yeah, that will comment yeah. on that. Also, but, yeah. We'll, we'll try and move on and, um, yeah, are they, they're just, just jealous people that of what we do. I've got my own merch, as you can see here, here the script merch. Um, and, yeah, we were both on Cameo. I um, thought we might as well plug in there. If you want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Bev, you on your Cameo yourself? Yeah, Jacob Bevis is the name. Uh, I think I think it might be under the Bev show, actually, the link. But, um, yeah, I have got a cameo. So, uh, yeah, it's quite a quite a good little platform, isn't it, Cooper, to, well, not only make a little extra money, but but also um, to, you know, I guess give people that, you know, want these personalised messages. It's actually it's, it's actually made my life a hell of a lot easier because I used to get a lot of requests before cameo and, and um, doing it all on Facebook is... Um, is quite a quite annoying sometimes just with the way that Facebook Messenger works, etc. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, people wanted us to go. Or oh, I know for myself, they wanted me to go on Cameo, and uh, just randomly, I accidentally had a message from Cameo lady who's actually the head of talent of Cameo, and she messaged me. She said, "Hey, uh, people want you on there. Do you want to go on?" I said, "Of course I do." Right now, we're going to talk about some AFL and Big Bash discussion. Now, Bev. What's your thoughts on the top eight? Uh, is it set? Is there some sides that are just outside do you think may come into the eight? What do you think in general of the, the ladder so far? Well, I thought a few weeks ago it was set. I thought, you know, West Coast and Richmond would be, you know, basically making up the, the last two spots in the eight. But now with the form that the Tigers have been in in, in previous weeks and, and West Coast as well, you you can't... You can't deny that seventh and eighth is is up for grabs. So, um, I mean, I, I think I think a team like a Frio could 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 even 
could even finish in the eight now and even your your St Kilda I mean they're flying at the moment and if they can you know keep bringing those those performances and they could sneak in as well but in terms of I guess first and six I think the teams are set in in those uh in between those positions it's just a matter of what final position those teams will finish in I think the top four still has a bit of uh a bit of uh, reordering to do but um yeah, I think now it's just about that seventh and eighth spot, and who will take those those spots, which is which is good because I think in previous years we've seen um, the top eight set pretty early. So uh, it's good to see that um, we've got you know a few uh, a dozen teams in in um, in uh, contention. Because who would you say is the most improved side this year? Not necessarily obviously the best side, but say say maybe a team that surprised you the most. That's a tough one because I mean Melbourne. Who would have thought they would be top of of the table come uh, come seventeen rounds and and even with the doggies as well. Not I'm not sure how many. I, I know I didn't have the doggies in the top four at the start of the season. And then I mean, how good have the Swans been this year? I didn't expect them to even be making finals. I'd probably have to go Melbourne um, just because yeah, they're top of the table. Didn't expect them. I thought they actually would make the eight, but I didn't expect them to be top. So probably a Melbourne. But yeah, I could make a case for the dogs and the Swans. Um, as well. Who would you say is the most disappointing? Obviously, there's a few sides we could put in that category, but who would you go with? Uh, the most disappointing. Um, oh, gee, I want to see. I want to say your Saints, to be honest, just because I had so much, I had so many high hopes for them. Of course, they can still make the eight now. Um, maybe a Carlson. I'd probably go Carlson though, just because a lot of hype surrounding them at the start of the season. Their supporters thought. This is it. This is the finals. This is this is our year to make the finals. Um, even the experts were saying that they would be, you know, slotting into the eight. And look where they are at the moment. They're thirteenth on the ladder, so they haven't quite uh, lived up to the expectations of some. So probably a Carlson um, would probably have to be, yeah, my final answer to that, or a St Kilda. So uh, my, I would say my most disappointing side of the year would probably be. Oh, I was, I was going to say Collingwood. They're always mm. hanging around. They've had a few injuries and obviously had to coach transition with Parks, Harvey for now. So I'd probably go Carlton as well. They recruited Zach Williams and Adam Sard and Lockie Fogarty as well. Lockie Fogarty's been in and out this year and Sard and Williams have been clearly disappointing this year. Sard's been okay without dominating. Zach Williams obviously been well documented about uh, they wanted him to play midfield and obviously he's not fit enough, they say, to. And David Teague admitted that, so it's not only... Just the media saying that he's the coaches admitted that themselves himself. So yeah, I'd probably say Carlton as well. Um, obviously they recruited the two high price players and uh, they're very good at their best, but uh, they've probably been both underperforming. Yeah, yeah absolutely, hundred percent. Well, the most improved would probably be Bernie's mob, the guy you do the commentary of burnout, bunk out with the burnout. Uh, the Swannies. Um, yeah. Also, I think I had them, I don't know if I had them just inside the eight or just outside the eight, but a lot of other people had them, you know, hanging throughout, hanging towards the bottom half of the ladder. And I'm really impressed with the Swannies and um, a lot of great young players, Chad Warner, Errol Gould and Logan McDonald, who I've said, I haven't said publicly before, but I'm, oh, I have on my page, but not in a video form, but Logan McDonald to me is the best key forward in the draft. Scott, I know you had your mate Jamara make his debut yesterday. A few other key forwards, Riley Thilthorpe yeah. as well. But yeah, Logan McDonald's probably the best young key defender in the draft. I thought it was dominating the waffle at 18. Not many young players do that at that age in the senior mm-hmm. competition. A lot of experienced players in there. Uh, but yeah, I thought him as well. And what about Isaac Heaney, Luke Parker, Josh Kennedy, Tom Hickey? Choice. He's been his fourth club, sat at the Gold Coast and went to my Saints. And I thought was wrongfully let go to the Eagles. Then the Eagles let him go. And now he's at the Swans on a three year deal thing, I was. And uh, he's been awesome and would be. I would say he might be the All-Australian Ruckman, but he definitely should be in the squad. He's, I mean, him and Sean Darcy probably been the two uh, most improved Ruckman in the competitions this year. So, uh, yeah, this one is a buddy. He's in, inching closer, Bev, to that 1,000 goal milestone, which I'm sure he'll get there very soon, if not late this year, early next year. So, uh, yeah, I'd probably have to go the Swans and Carlton for most disappointing. And in terms of the latter, you mentioned before, Bev, um, he pretty much summed it up perfectly what I was going to say. The top six, you set how it is. Obviously, in that order, will be dependent on how they go in the last six or so rounds. Uh, yeah, seventh and eighth is up for grabs. So I might say it's a bit biased, but if St Kilda can perform how they did against Brisbane Lions, sadly, no, that was amazing. 
even, not just the, forget the last quarter. I know that was dominant, but even the first three quarters when it was even, they were sticking in there. Brisbane got a goal or two ahead sometimes and secured to keep fighting back, which was great to see. So from seventh and eighth spot, they stood up for grabs, probably up between 12 sides, or from six, seventh to 12th is up for grabs, as you said. So I'm probably going to go the Saints and oh, I'm t- really tossing up between GWS and Freeman. I think Richmond won't make it. They're a chance with their fixture. West Coast are cooked. Actually, I probably should have gone them as the most disappointing West Coast. I mean, yes, they've had a lot of injuries, but they've started to get some of these players back and uh, they've been terrible. I've been saying to my podcast, they're cooked. They only win at home. And even so lately, your bomb gave them a big thrashing in Perth a few weeks ago at an op- empty Optus Stadium. So, yeah, they've been pretty disappointed. So I don't think they'll make it. So probably down to Freo and GWS for the final spot in the eight. Now, Bev, we'll move on to the BBL. I know this is a footy show, but uh, got, if I'm going to talk to you, I've got to talk to you about your cane trains, the cane train um, led by Darcy Short and Matty Wade. Uh, what's your overall thoughts on the uh, canes and uh, how they'll perform this year and who they should recruit even? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, they were a bit disappointing last season. That was probably the, the more disappointing season I've seen for some time, uh, you know, making finals on a consistent basis until until last season. So especially with, you know, the recruits of, you know, David Miller, David Milan and and players like that to, uh, yeah, not make the finals last year was a bit, or last season was a bit disappointing. But um, I think they need to just really strengthen their their batting lineup. You know, besides, you know, Matty Wade and Darcy Short and even Ben McDermott, it's a bit sort of thin down the middle order. So, you know, a nice all round, it would be nice. I'm not sure who, who who that is or, you know, who they target, but I'm sure they've got players in mind um, uh, as a, um, in the off season, uh, in the recruiting season. So, um, yeah, hopefully they can strengthen that team and hopefully the Canes can, can get back up to finals and hopefully win one soon because I haven't, uh, I've seen a, I've seen a couple of, I've seen them play in a couple of finals, but uh, they haven't, uh, they haven't won one yet, just like your stars. So, uh, and I know you're probably uh, feeling the same as me. So, um, so yeah, hopefully they can, it would be nice to see, you know, I think a couple of years ago they had a chance to, to play in a final at Blundstone and they lost to your stars, uh, Cooper. Yeah. So um so uh, yeah, but no, I love the Canes. Um, they're a they're a club that I yeah support very dearly, and and given that they're in Tasmania, I definitely have a, a close connection with them. I can go to all the games, and and obviously summer's a great time, and and um, yeah, Big Bash just yeah always uh, increases uh, the the entertainment during the uh, during the summer. I go for the Melbourne Stars. That's correct. Uh, well, I mean, I have I've been a member for a few years. I haven't been a consistent member as you have for the Big Bash, but. Uh, yeah, in terms of their side, obviously got the big show, Glenn Maxwell. Um, mm-hmm. Great, great player, and obviously the most, probably the most dominating player in the competition at his best, clearly. Um, probably in the world, even, Bev. I mean, he's probably the most entertaining. I'd probably go, personally, I would go as the most entertaining player in the entire competition in all football, especially T20 format. Uh, and the universe boss, Chris Gale, obviously two great players. Obviously, it would have been nice to see Chris back in the competition, but... Uh, yeah, so, I yeah, agree. But um, with um, with Channel Seven, so that may not happen again. But uh, he's a great player, Chris Gale, and they both know how to entertain. I would love to see them pick up him, but uh, I don't think that'll happen ever again. With big bash side for Chris Gale, but um, yeah, Glenn Maxwell, Nicholas Puran, I thought it was a little bit disappointing. Uh, yeah, I think he had one great game. I think it was in Tassie actually. Yeah, at had a quick five forty odd, I think. But uh, they probably need More to recruit. Yet. I think they need to recruit better. Keeper, that was the loss. Peter Hanscom to your mob, the Hurricanes, and uh, Sammy Harper's obviously at the Renegades, so they're missing a few players. They had Seb Gotch in that position. Nicholas Perron, when he was playing, was keeping a little bit. They probably need to bolster that area. Um, Adam Zampa is a great spin bowler, which you would love to have at the Kane train. Um, obviously, he's a great player, Zamps, and uh, obviously, he's on international duty a lot, so they probably need to recruit another spinner as well. There's a few holes there, but um, that top order is very, very strong enough. Hopefully, who knows, Bev? They may both sides may feature in the final this year, and uh, be interesting to see how that goes. Uh. We'll now move on to some quick fire questions. Bev's going to give me some quick fire questions, and I'll give him some as well. But I'll start off, of course, uh, as per usual. Uh, Bev, we've got some quick fire questions for you. We'll start off with this: Why the Western Bulldogs? Uh, because my dad went for or goes for the Western Bulldogs, so 
that's sort of yeah how I started supporting the dogs and and um, yeah so have been supporting them all my life. Uh, have gone through some lows, but gone through some highs. Definitely wouldn't uh, change uh, the club that I have uh, started barracking for. Yeah. And we kind of alluded alluded to this earlier in the show, but have people ever threatened you before over Facebook? Uh, yes. Yep. Correct. Which obviously, as we mentioned earlier, sucks. Favorite food? Favorite food? Uh, spaghetti bolognese. That's a pretty good one. Uh, now, this, I think I may know the answer to this, and everyone may know the answer to this, but I got to ask it anyway. Favorite AFL journo slash commentator? Yeah, Bruce McAvaney has to be. Um, yeah, I've, I've just, ever since I've started, uh, uh, having the interest of, of sports media and sports broadcasting, he's always been the one I've I've um, I've looked up to. Um, yeah, miss I, I miss him calling AFL matches this season, uh, Cooper. It's uh, been quite hard uh, without him this year, but um, he'll be he'll be calling the Olympics in a couple of weeks. So I'm pumped for that. That's good. Uh, we've got two more. Uh, who's better, you, me, or Bernie? <laughs> Oh, oh, well, it has to be you, wouldn't it? Um, surely. Uh, well, Bernie, I was going to hear that, but thank you. Uh, we're on to the final one. Speaking of Bernie, again, he's getting a few mentions today, Bernie. Uh, now, this is kind of incorporated through a few fan questions, which we'll get to later on. Uh, but uh, chances of a collab between us three, us, you, me, and Bernie. Sorry, Bernie, you, and I, before people want to grammatically <laughs> correct me. Well, I've heard some suggestions that we should employ you as the expert commentator in our commentaries, um, for, especially for St Kilda matches. Uh, <laughs> You'll chip straight up. <laughs> yeah, it- I, I don't know though. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if Bernie knows who you are. To be honest, I've never, I've never spoken to him about about you before. But um, no, he's a good bloke. He's a good bloke. Bernie calls calls beautifully. Does well, and one thing I want to quickly mention before we get to your questions for me. Uh, that, that game, Geelong, Western Bulls, I, was, I don't want to keep harping it on to you because Bulldogs lost in that game, but I want to credit Bernie for his call on that. I know, see how deflated you were. How great was his call, though? Yeah, it sort of worked out perfectly. Like, I could have been calling that moment because we, we switched. We, we switched after every um, – basically after every stoppage. And so it was sort of sort of worked out well. He was calling and I was, you know, deep in the emotion of the game and – and um, yeah, no, I think that's the first time we've actually called a a game with a kick after the siren. So um, yeah, called it with plenty of um, yeah, plenty of uh, passion and and emotion, and and um, yeah, definitely got it right. It was uh, it was quite good. It's probably one of the more famous calls he's done, I reckon. Yeah, we'll be proud of that. Uh, now we'll move on to what you have. Yeah, I've got some uh, I've got some different type. Of, I've got some hard hitting questions, I reckon. Um, First one uh, is about St Kilda. So they've been a bit disappointing this year, it's fair to say. Do you think it's a bit of a, a bit of a one-off and will they be better next year? Of course, bearing in mind that they can still make the eight, of course. Uh, yeah, it has been disappointing, Bev. I still think, as you said, they can still make the eight this year. I mean, people can always mention injuries, and yes, injuries is an excuse, but depending on who the injuries are. Now, St Kilda had a lot of injuries this year, but it's not so much the amount. Or it does when there's not much depth, but the type of players have been injured. Rowan Marshall and Paddy Rod, everyone knows about the dominance that you'll have when they're both in the side. They pretty much win most of the games when they're both in the side. St. Kilda have only had them two playing the whole game the last three weeks, and they've won St. Kilda's won all three. The game against Geelong, Rowan Marshall got injured at half time, which would have been the only full game they had together. And St. Kilda obviously fell away in the second half, mainly through goalkeeping, but uh, yeah, you had them two plays injured for most of the year. Paddy Ryder had personal reasons for the first month, and Rowe's been out on and off pretty much the whole year to the last eight weeks. So that, they're two key plays, and they're vital to the side. But, um, no, it's still been disappointing, Bev, because some of the players that have come in, uh, handy plays like Jack Loney, uh, plays like that, who I think is underrated, who the Bulldogs were after last year, uh, which may go there still at the end of next year. But, uh, yeah, no, um, it has been disappointing. But as you said, six rounds ago, three wins in a row now, and... Uh, who knows? We could be talking about finals again, hopefully. We could. I reckon they're a good chance to get against Port Adelaide coming up on the weekend. Look, I'll, tell, I'll just mention, this is not a quick-fire question, but I've been really impressed with Luke Dunstan since he's coming to the team. Cooper, are you surprised as well? Uh, How good he's I'm, doing? The, the few people that know me best in Kilda is I don't really 
say there's a few ba- many bad players, but Luke Dunson was one of three. I don't rate at all. And fair enough that he wasn't getting the game to start. The young Jack Vitale was taking his spot, and Ryan Burns is still in the side of the moment in front of him. And obviously, Zach Jones, Brad Croucher, way ahead of him. But yeah, no, even I've been impressed with his form last week, last four weeks. But since he came back against North Melbourne, I thought, okay, that was a great performance against North Melbourne, but was North Melbourne. But then he backed it up against Richmond on Martin and Cochin, and I thought, well, let's see if he continues this. And, I mean, even if that was a one-off, that was on some of the best plays in the competition, one of the best teams. So, no, he's been great, Luke Dunson, and uh, he shocked me at least and a lot of other people. And he may now get another year or two, which, I mean, what a difference a month does to his contract status. Now, a few clubs will be interested in him. Carlton will be one. Absolutely. All right, next question. Hope the answer is a good one. Should Tasmania have their own AFL team? <laughs> this, is, yeah, this is very interesting. Now, obviously, I know what you think about this and you clearly think they should, and I've heard all your reasons why, and it's fair enough too. I mean, if they're going to add more teams in, which is probably not good for sides that hang around the eight, adding more sides to the competition, but, yeah, they should, Bev. But then if they're going to have one, there should be a 20th because I don't want an uneven number where, you know, there's all these buys. Like with the VFL, mm. things terrible happen three buys per season, which you only have 19 rounds all going well. So to play 16 games, I don't like that concept. So there would need to be an even number. So, yes, if they're going to add them in, they're going to add a 20th, I suppose. But, yes, they do deserve their own team. And, obviously, led by Nick Rewald is one of those guys wanting that team, Bev. So, uh, yes, they should. Would be nice to see, I guess, Northern Territory join. the. Maybe they could open it, open it up to 10 teams for the finals as well if they went to a 20 20- a 20-team comp, perhaps. Oh, that'd probably make, actually, that would probably make it much better, Bev. See, Bev, we've got all the ideas and AFL's we do. listen. We yeah. do. They just, need to, they just need to sack Gillan McLaughlin and put us in the chair, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. They like, can put us on Fox Footy as well or Channel 7, whatever. We're happy with either channel. Thank you. That's, yeah, absolutely. Um, who is – this could be a bit of a tough one. Who is the best AFL player you've seen in your in your time? Yeah. Um, oh, is it? Tough one. I probably really tough to decide. Probably between three players, uh, two key forwards and a midfielder. Probably Gary Ablett, probably the best midfielder of our time or my time. Um, I, I really do rate Nat Five. All the people want to question his goal kick, uh, his goal kicking and his kicking in general. A lot of the top players, Dangerfield and Martin, and uh, a few other players like that, haven't got the best kicking efficiency. So yeah, Gary Ablett, Nat Five, probably the other midfielder. But the two key forwards, I think people may know where I'm going at with this one. I mentioned about three times already. Nick Carey, well, probably one of the best key forwards of my time. And obviously, you can never discount Buddy Franklin, one of the Super Series. And we mentioned him earlier as well. So seems to be a trend. I mentioned who is great. So, uh, yeah, Buddy, Rui, Nat Five, and Gaz. Very good answers. Um, the next question I have got, uh, I think you've sort of answered this before, but I'll sort of ask you, how, how did you sort of start this, the, the AFL uh, information trade rumours page? Uh, when did you start it and, and, and how did you get the idea and, and um, yeah, explain your story a little bit? Yeah, so I started that all the way back in 2013. Now, I had a yeah. lot of friends in high school, which I'm clearly not going to mention the school and that I went to for obvious reasons, but uh, yeah, the high school I went to, Bev, uh, I just started on a page. People kept asking me and not not harassing, but, you know, wanted me, kept asking me news. I thought, look, I'm just going to make a page so you can stop asking me every every time at school and that. You can just follow the page and I'll keep posting. Now, back then I posted a lot. I had a few other admins on there when I was doing the majority of the work. But uh, as I say in every introduction, I'm the sole admin. Yes, I've been the sole admin pretty much since 2015-ish. Um, yeah, I started up back then because people wanted me to post news and stuff and ask me about it, so I would post it. And then now, obviously, it's gone big and publicly have come out uh, showing my face the last six months or so. Since yeah, around, eight, actually not even six months, around April, had that interview with the Tom Morris, as you called it, through the uh, um, cameo thing, which, by the way, I never requested that or I even knew who that person was. So thanks for the free whoever that was. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm with Tom Morris. I think we do it a bit more and... Uh, yeah, no, I had the passion for it, Bev, and I uh, loved it ever since. And now look what I'm doing. I'm going similar trend to what you're doing, having all these type of interviews and uh, shout-outs and everything. So it's uh, awesome. I love doing it and I always do opinionated stuff. If you want to get your clicks up, you've always got to have opinionated stuff. Now, one I do remember was having Tim Membry in my top 10 plays in the country for this year, uh, which you may know about. So, um, 
Yeah, I do rate him. Obviously, some people say he's nowhere near the top 10 and fair enough, but that was just an opinion and probably get clicks. But I think Tim Embry is one of the best hybrid uh, key fours. Obviously, he's not a key four, but like a third tall, like the John Degoe types. I think he's up there. Um, and this year he's had some pretty good games. But, uh, yeah, that's how I started at Bev and uh, keep going ever since. Now I've got the podcast, which you're on right now, and uh, Facebook page and Cameo and all those sites. I've got my own merch store as well. Should have mentioned with this kick at the scoops top. So, yeah, ever since Bev, keep keep going onwards and upwards. Absolutely, no, fantastic stuff. And uh, the last question I've got. Um, obviously, we know that you love your footy. I think you love your cricket too. Do you love any other sports outside of, I guess, those those two? Uh, not particularly. Mainly AFL and cricket's my main. Like I watch the tennis here and there. Um, Olympics yeah. coming up. You follow that. You'll follow the Olympics in a couple of weeks? Yeah, I'll, I'll browse through it, yeah. Um, yeah, and probably hear your mate Bruce calling it as well, as you mentioned. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll watch I'll probably be as full on about it. But, uh, yeah, no, mainly AFL and cricket. Um, if you watch a bit of fight, well, not fighting, but, you know, boxing and stuff like that, the uh, people want to say WWE is fake and fair enough, whatever. I'll watch that as well. But, um, yeah. No, mainly AFL and cricket, Beth. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, can't beat the AFL, can you? No, you can never beat the AFL and the uh, cricket, which are obviously through the Big Bash. In particular, I obviously follow all the one. I don't just watch Australian games and just the BBL. I do love watching the IPL as well. Um, I've started to pick a team in there, the Punjab Kings, where Chris Gales, coincidentally, and I mentioned about him and Maxi. They were in the same side now. Maxi's been shipped off, I think, RCB now. So disappointing but uh yeah no the Punjab Kings they got KL Rahul from India who's fantastic Maya Gagawal is a great opening pairing with him and obviously the universe boss and they've got a good, few good young bowlers as well so yeah no love the IPL as well Bev yeah, we're now Very good stuff. to the quiz wow 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 what are your thoughts guys on the collab between Bev and I in the first half of the collab, the second half of the collab, we airing on next week's show, which I am naming the season finale of the Bev and I collab. Leave your thoughts down below what you thought of the first half of the collab, which you just watched. The second half will be up next week, but you will not want to miss some very big um, discussion points in the second half of the show or the of the collab, which you'll see next week including some of your fan questions in next week's show or next week's part of the collab with Bev and I. So you do not want to miss out some very heated answers and debates in the second half of next week's collab also. So my final thoughts are this. You want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Now, also, as I said, at the top of the show, Stubby Holders, $15 live on the channel right now, so you want stubby holders for fifteen dollars with my face on it? You know what to do. Head right now to the website, which is attached in this YouTube video in the description. So head to the website, purchase your stubby holders now for fifteen dollars. Because trust me when I say they will not be there for long for a limited time only. Appreciate everyone tuning in this week. Please tune in to next week's show virtual again. Until next week, everyone have a great one, and most importantly, go the Saints.